And thank you for joining us. I'm Marnie Hughes in Chicago. As we meet you online today to talk about our missing series here at News Nation, we started this more than a year ago and we have covered more than 160 missing persons cases. And I want to lay out for you briefly what happens here online on Facebook and on YouTube and on our News Nation um, online site. Uh, we're going to share with you a group that is working to uncover missing cases on tribal lands across the country. And I want you to be part of this conversation. So as you watch the story today, um, if you have questions, stick around. I'll be interviewing one of the women who is involved in the search and rescue group. Uh, this is a time for us to have a conversation, a discussion about missing cases that often get overlooked, which is the point of our missing series. And if you have a missing loved one uh, without any answers of what happened to them or what could have happened to them can be one of the hardest things for a family to bear, right? I think we can all put ourselves in their shoes. And at the very least, you want to know that someone is looking for them, that somebody is on the case. But there are thousands of missing indigenous people in our country, and many Native families say they just are not getting the help and the attention that they need and deserve. So this morning in our Missing series, we're going to introduce you to a group of women who are doing everything possible to bring those families answers. I want to share that story with you now, and then we'll talk about it afterwards. A parade celebrating the Navajo Nation. It is a rare weekend day off for search dogs Trigger and Gunny. This is what they're used to. Weekends spent scouring the breathtaking and dangerous landscapes of America's tribal lands, searching for missing and murdered indigenous people. October through November, we had a search every weekend. Bernadine Biel is the founder of Four Corners Canine Search and Rescue. The mission born when she was told her state-run search team in New Mexico couldn't help a Native American family searching for their son. He said, if you go, you're actually going to have to go on your own and not part of the team. You're going as a community member because we only can deploy when the state police calls us. For Biel, there was no hesitation. Today, her all-female, all-Native American volunteer group fills a unique gap able to respond for families searching on tribal lands. We are not tied to anybody. I don't report to the Navajo police. I don't report to the state of New Mexico. We are our own team. So who we report to is the families when they need help. Like the family of Rennell Rose Bennett in New Mexico. Ryan Tom, 32 years old, missing since June in Utah or 51-year-old Benny Stash with health problems and going blind who never came back from the store. We searched for him for a day and a half and we had no clue where he went. Trigger and Gunny with GPS collars tracked on a map a sad conclusion. His remains just a quarter mile away. Once the dogs got started, we found him within 45 minutes. I was very happy that they were there help the family out and how would you say like a closure for our family. Biel and her team now being invited to speak at schools and to tribal police groups. It's an everyday thing, every day after work we go out and train on something. Explaining what her team does and how they can work together. Biel's parents were both Navajo police officers. That's where my passion came in it is how can I help these families and law enforcement uh, bridge that gap? She spends nearly all her free time and most of her paychecks on the expensive search missions. She's hoping to add a drone and more trained volunteers, covering all 27,000 square miles of Navajo Nation, and sometimes other reservations when called, all in hopes of chipping away at the thousands of unsolved cases of missing indigenous people and bringing families the answers they're desperately seeking.
filling such an important void. BL has launched a GoFundMe campaign to help pay for the cost of so many of the searches that you saw there, and she is looking for more trained volunteers. And she is with us this morning to talk more about her mission and this program. Uh, Bernadine, thank you so much. Uh, the founder of Canine Search and Rescue, The Four Corners. Um, it's really incredible. So often, week to week, we cover missing cases, but you're the team that comes in afterwards and helps these families who feel so desperate for answers. They're not getting the attention that they, they want on their cases. How did you first get involved with this as people at home join in and listen to your story and ask their questions of their own? Can you hear me, Bernadine? No, oh, it looks, looks as though we might be having a little bit of technical difficulty. Uh, because this is a little informal, we're online. I'm going to take a moment to talk to my team behind the scenes. You guys let me know um, her I, audio. Oh, I think I, I hear can, you. I can hear you now. Oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs> that took a lot less time than I, than I thought. Great to hear your voice, Bernadine. Thank you so much for what you and your team are doing. I was just asking a moment ago, how did you get started? How did you get involved in helping these families search for missing loved ones? Uh, well, it all started with a German Shepherd puppy that I, we decided to get seven years ago. Um, turns out this this pup was super smart. Um, we started with obedience training, and then we went into search and rescue training, and then we joined a team with the state of New Mexico. And this team we were on, um, we did a lot of community events. And uh, at one of these community events, we were approached by a native family. Um, they had been, their son had been missing for six months and they wanted to conduct a search in a couple different areas outside of Shiprock, New Mexico. And they didn't know how to go about it. They didn't understand what dogs do uh, in search and rescue. So um, we went out and we decided to help them uh, during that time. So we went to one place called Hogback, uh, looked in this area for them. We didn't find anything. Um, and then a week later, they had some information that they should look in a different area south of Shiprock, New Mexico. So that's where we went with the family on a second weekend. And south of Shiprock in, uh, in a hilly area, that's where we ended up finding their son. Um, so from there, it kind of went from word of mouth, you know, they told another family that was in the same situation as they were, and then it went to another family from there. And it kind of, it just kind of started growing from there, uh, that last year in 2022, in February, I decided to start this, uh, nonprofit Four Corners Canine Search and Rescue. Wow, it's really delicate work. I know that you guys give families a lot of hope because you're on the case, um, Tell me about the dogs. How many dogs do you have? What type of training do they and you and your team have? So I have two dogs. Uh, Trigger is the oldest. He is seven years old. And Gunny is um, a Czechoslovakian shepherd. I got him from um, far Texas, Mexican border. Uh, Gunny was bred in a, a litter of 10. Um, and crazy is yesterday was Gunny's birthday. So he just turned two yesterday. But he was in a litter of 10. And um, his litter, were, they were bred to go to Texas police departments and Mexican police. And he's the only pup out of his litter that um, went to search and rescue. But um, it takes a lot of training. It's an everyday thing. You know, it's not once a day, twice a week, uh, not a weekend thing. You know, it's every day. They have to have obedience training down. Um, and then you determine on what discipline they're going into. Um, so they both do life find. Life find meaning... Uh, someone that went missing just recently, like a hiker or a hunter. Um, and then they also do uh, HRD training, which is human remains detection. So that's looking for um, bones, tissue, anything that is related to uh, a, a body. And what I think is so unique, Bernadine, about you and the Four Corners Canine Search and Rescue Team is that you're searching on tribal land. So talk to me about why you're doing that and the challenges of doing that. Uh, so one of the things I ran into um, when I first started with my first search and rescue team, uh, New Mexico Badlands, they are a resource to the state of New Mexico. So in the state of New Mexico, when someone goes missing, let's say in the Four Corners area, they call out all the teams near that area to see who's available to assist. 
if we don't have enough team uh, teams to uh, deploy, they will reach out to the rest of the state of New Mexico. So th that's really how simple it is. Uh, especially in New Mexico, but um, they don't really deploy out onto reservations or tribal lands. They would have to get the okay from the state police because they're a resource to the Department of Public Safety or Navajo Nation would have to reach out to them to ask for the extra assistance. So with me going out and being our own team and organization, I don't respond I don't report to anybody. I don't report to the Naval Police. I don't report to the state of New Mexico. We're our own organization with our own training that we provided ourselves. And in doing that, it gets me out there faster. Um, and just honestly talking with these families, um, I get a lot of more information from them because I'm not law enforcement. You know, a, um, a lot of families tend to not give all the information, but when someone like me comes along, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just another person like them. I'm not an authority. I'm not at an authority level. So um, it gets us out there faster and helps us get more information that is needed for the dogs in, in finding the person they're looking for. Now, does that mean that law enforcement are not also actively looking for these missing people? Do you have law enforcement blessing that you go and, and do these searches? You know, when we first started, we were just going out at the request of families, especially because families don't know how to do a search. Um, they, you know, and I get it. I understand if my relative went missing, I'd be out there right away, right now searching. But a lot of these families don't understand the safety uh, concerns out there. You know, you're contaminating an area with your scent. Um, also, they think we're going to search up to that hill over there, not knowing that hill is two miles away. Uh, so those are things they have to consider. But when we got started, we were just uh, um, dealing with families. But then the busier we got, I started reaching out to Navajo police. You know, before we go out to an area, we call the dispatch to let them know, hey, we're helping a family on a search in this area. We're letting you know we're here. And when we leave, we're going to call you, let you know we're leaving the area. Just so they knew we were out there and what we were doing. Um, some And now that we've gotten a little bit busier, we do get some calls from Navajo police to help assist. Um, but a lot of the times is the Navajo Nation is so huge. So these officers are stretched, you know, thin because they don't have enough officers out there to respond to these things. Um, they could be dealing with uh, an emergency call. So um, that's where we come in. You know, sometimes I'm out there by myself without Navajo police and maybe on rare occasions, sometimes we will have a Navajo police with us. Mm -hmm. So we're just trying to help you know, fill that gap for them in any way we can. Right. Uh, we've got a few people who, are, who have some questions online, Bernadine, for you, starting with Roger from California, who is listening into our discussion, and he wants to know what the most rewarding case that you have helped solve has been. Um, I think just recently, we um, one of the things we also struggle with is educating people on what search and rescue dogs do. Uh, and that's uh, being called in a timely manner, you know, calling us right away. Sometimes we get called late and it's too late. So I have one instance where um, we were looking for a guy, his name is Benny Stash out in Bluff, Utah. He this wasn't a, a call right away, but I, um, he went missing on a Saturday and we were called out on a Wednesday. Um, was off his meds, a um, lot of things going on with him. We got there, um, officers closed off an area for us, but they had searched other areas. Uh, so we focused on the areas that they closed off for us. And Within 45 minutes, this was during the summer in August, within 45 minutes, um, Trigger picked up footprints and then picked up a scent and then Gunny picked up a scent where they were actually following where he had been. So it's just amazing to watch their GPS tracks of them going in a circle, going straight, going in a circle, crossing the road. going. So it kind of tells you where what Benny was doing when he was out there. And then they they eventually found him over a hill, kind of in a divot of sand. But, um, you know, it was rewarding for us because it amazed me with all the training I've done with them, how quickly they found him out there. But things worked in our favor because officers closed off an area. People were in there all over looking, you know, and that helps the dogs um, do their job quicker. Uh, unfortunately, um, Benny was not um, found alive, but at least um, we brought some closure to the family in that situation. Right. And, and that must be 
the delicate part of your job is working with these families, knowing that the outcome may often be a sad one, uh, but it will give them some closure. How closely do you work with families through that process? Are they out there with you? Are you in constant communication? Uh, walk us through that. So in, in this situation, example, um, Benny's sister and one of his brother was out there with us. Um, the rest of his family were, were at the house. Uh, fortunately, we were ahead of the family far enough that I was able to call on the radio to one of the uh, volunteers that was helping to tell him, hey, can you get the family and tell them to start heading back to incident base? Um, just to keep them from coming into the area. So um, we, we don't, we don't, we have codes over the radio when we find somebody. And in that instance, the team members know, let's go get the family back to the house. Mm -hmm. That's if the family's with us, but we, I prefer families not to search with us. I pref I really stress to families to not go out there on their own because uh, number one thing is they, People think they're mentally prepared to see what they're going to see. They really think they are, but they're not. I've, I've run into several situations where family just weren't prepared for what they were going to see out there. And that's the one thing I try to avoid with them. One thing I want to shine a light on, which is incredibly important, I was doing some research in preparing to speak with you, Bernadine, and I was on the U.S. Department of Interior Indian Affairs, and looking at some of the data, they said, for example, for decades, Native American and Alaska Native communities have struggled with high rates of assault, abduction, and murder of women. In fact, when you look back at some of the statistics, about 1,500 American Indian and Alaska Native missing persons have been entered into the National Crime Information Center but there are so many more that aren't entered into the national database NAMIS. Why is that? And how many more cases are there of missing women and missing indigenous people that, that aren't getting attention that are happening? It could be a series of several things, you know, how they're reported. A lot of families don't like to report their relatives missing too because um, they might have a warrant out there. You know, that's one thing they're like, I don't wanna report him and get him in trouble. Um, some of it is uh, classifying them as, you know, American Indian, Alaskan, Caucasian or Asian. Um, they get misclassified in that. Also is um, unique is our last names, you know, like in Navajo, um, Begay is spelled, could be spelled three different ways. Benali can be spelled three different ways. Um, so there's uh, quite a few like uh, mistakes that are made in, in that. And some people just probably just haven't reported them because they don't know how to do that or where to go. Um, and on the Navajo Nation, you know, especially with our uh, elderly, you know, they don't have, a lot of them still don't have running water. They don't have electricity. Some of them don't even have cell phones. So they don't know where to go and what to do in those situations. And that's um, one of the problems I see out there. Um, you know, I, I run into elderly people all the time that are like, hey, yeah, what are you guys doing out here? And I'm like, we're looking for Bob. And they'll tell you, oh, no one told us that. Well, I seen him two months ago or so they're really kind of they don't they're not really up to date on what's going on in the world today. And even if they have their own relative missing, especially being out there in the middle of nowhere, um, they, they don't know what to do. I've got about uh, four minutes or so left, uh, Bernadine, until uh, 1130, and I want to make sure that I let people know how they can get involved. Your work is challenging. It's also very expensive, and I don't want to lose sight of the fact that you're all women, all volunteer, all Native American. I've got a question from Andrea Guerrera. She is in California, and she wants to know how someone can connect with your organization, how someone can volunteer with Four Corners Canine Search and Rescue. Uh, right now, we do have a social media base, so we are on Facebook under Four Corners, the number four, Canine Search and Rescue. We are also on Instagram. Um, we are working on building a website. We're right in the middle of that right now, so I'm hoping to have that up um, within the next few weeks. Um, but if you can reach out to us on our Four Corners uh, Facebook page and message us on there, we will get back to you with more information that you need from us. Um, also, our email address is four corners canine search and rescue at gmail.com. And again, four is the number four. But uh, yeah, reach out to us, follow us, see what we're up to, see what we need. And we are always looking for volunteers. 
Wow, uh, it's incredible work. What does it mean to you to be doing this, to work with these families and to be providing some sort of answer and closure for them? Uh, it means a lot. You know, my, my, both my parents were Navajo police officers, but um, I never really had that uh, passion to go into law enforcement, but something in me, you know, there, some drive in me was like, Hey, there's there, you are meant to do something here. And I have this love for dogs. And I don't know if I never would have met trigger. I don't know if I'd be doing this, but somehow trigger and I, we were meant to be together to start this because honestly, this really started because of him and his drive, his knowledge and his passion. And, you know, no, no one else is doing it. And, um, it has to be done. We have to figure out how to solve this. We have to figure out how do we bridge that gaps between families and law enforcement and these agencies. You know, more things need to happen in the situation. And, you know, and it dives down deeper into that, you know, what's coming into the reservation, you know, what's really causing all of this, you know, and uh, drugs and alcohol are a big problem out on the reservation, you know, outside stuff coming in. So those are those are other things that feed into all of this. Well, I applaud you and your all-female, all-volunteer team for the work that you're doing. Um, I hope that you'll stay in touch with us as you're working on cases that we can help shine a light on as well. Bernadine Biel, founder of Four Corners Canine Search and Rescue. Uh, my best to you and your group. I hope you get a lot of attention out of this and a lot more support and help to do this important, incredible work. Uh, it's great to talk to you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. And if you would like more information and you'd like to submit a case that you think we should be covering here on Missing, if you want to take part in this mission that we have here at News Nation, you can go to our website right now, newsnationnow.com slash missing. Uh, barring any breaking news, we air our missing stories on Thursdays on News Nation Live in our second hour. And we're going to continue these Facebook and YouTube conversations live with you uh, on this platform moving forward. So I encourage you, submit your questions, follow our cases and let us know if there's a missing case we should be paying attention to. I'm Marnie Hughes in Chicago. As always, thank you so much for giving us some of your time. I'll see you back here next week. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.